We're back. It is our first video of 2025. This is Soft Magnetics. Hard Touch. I am Bridget. And I'm Mike. So today we're going to be talking about gapping. And Mike, what is gapping? So gapping is when you have a gap in your ferrite core. Mm -hmm. So in the case of a like a planar EQ core, that could be spacing the sections of core apart from each other, either totally or cutting down the center post to reduce that are the two most common ways to do it. Or in the case of a split core, this you would normally just kind of spread the pieces apart with a spacer tore and you could just cut a slot in it. Okay, and why do you need gapping? I uh, gap for a variety of reasons. So in a suppression core is probably a less common uh, area that you would gap. But what you would use it for in a suppression core is to increase the amount of current that the core can handle before it saturates. So above some amount of current, every ferrite core is going to start saturating. The impedance is going to drop down on it. Uh, permeability is going to drop down on it. You're going to add a gap between the core halves that'll increase that amount of current it can handle. It's also going to drop the impedance and permeability of the material throughout it, though. So it becomes a little bit of a balancing act on suppression cores. That's why it's not super common to do it on those, though it is possible. On an inductive component, there's a variety of reasons you would gap. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, kind of similar to this to raise the saturation level of something. Uh, similar downsides, your inductance is going to drop. One of the more common reasons you'd gap is if you're going to be building an inductor. So ferrite cores, depending on the shape and the material they're made out of, they're going to have some AL value intrinsic to them. So let's say it's um, three microhenries per turn or something like that. Now you can adjust the final inductance of your finished component by adjusting the number of turns or the number or the material it's made out of, but that doesn't give you a ton of granularity. Um, it's hard to put 2.35 turns on a core. And the next material down in permeability may drop that inductance number too low to get away with the same turn count. So what you can do instead is you can gap. So you can put a deliberate air gap in there and tune the AL value or inductance factor or inductance per turn of the part in a much more granular way by adding an air gap in there because you're able to tune the effective permeability of the material to exactly what you need. Um, that's probably the most common way you'll see a gap. In fact, a lot of gapped parts are going to be specced for a specific AL value. So rather than saying I need one millimeter of air gap, you're going to say I need an air gap put in this core so that the AL drops from 3,000 nanohenries per turn down to 400 or something. Um, that's probably the most common uh, reason you would gap a core. And do you need to gap a core for certain product lines that we have? Uh, you don't absolutely. Well, it depends what you're trying to make. So um, cores like this, you know, the planar core I held up before, they're pretty common to gap them when you're making things like inductors out of them. Uh, a lot of inductors have a fairly tight tolerance they need to hit. Ferrite cores in general are gonna have an AL tolerance of plus or minus 20 to 30% depending on the material and the part that you're making out of it. Uh, you may need a much tighter AL value than that. Now, if you're inductance value is sufficiently high that you need, 
You can tune the inductor's value by just adding and removing turns after the fact. In that case, you wouldn't need a gap. But if you're going to use a lower turn count, on the part where you need a particularly low inductance value, then yeah, you likely will have to gap. And by the way, when you add a gap into a core, the larger that gap gets in the core, the less effect the material permeability has on your final inductance number. So instead of your base core having a plus minus 20% AL value, you can start getting into the single digit AL values of the core when the gap gets sufficiently large. Any other tricks or tips for gapping that you want to share with ferrite? Um, it's not always the right answer. Sometimes you need to change a material. Um, you know, if you're trying to gap a super high permeability material down to a level where you could get away with just a lower permeability material. Sometimes that's a better option than kind of brute forcing it. Sometimes a different material altogether. Uh, there's certain scenarios where in like a suppression core, if you're trying to handle super high currents with it, I, uh, there's some scenarios where you might be better off at like a powdered iron core rather than trying to make a ferrite core work via gapping. Cool. Um, Terrible sales guy. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's certain scenarios where, where gapping doesn't work that well, or maybe it's not optimal. Um, usually when you're adding an air gap to a core, uh, especially like a, a power core that's going to be ran at high flux density, um, you usually will incur some additional loss in gapping. And a lot of that's going to come from things like flux fringing. So whenever you have a gap, you know, along the magnetic path length of your part, some flux is going to escape and that could couple into the winding and create a bunch of undesirable currents and then heating of your winding. So that's something to watch out for when you're gapping. So instead of gapping the center post, you could do something like gapping the whole spacer up. You could have flux leakage and EMI issues from that potentially, but it's going to create smaller air gaps which give you less chance for flux fringing into the winding area so it's a, another method to do and adding spacer is usually a little bit cheaper than cutting down the center post of the core too so could be another another thing to look out for that's, that's, it. It. that's gapping that's gapping to me the gap is a store usually that's let me let me just <laughs> preface that's a brief overview of gapping there's a lot more that you could get into with that but we don't have the memory card space for that so all right well that's cool thank you very much for going over that if you want us to cover anything else feel free to comment bye bye